Right, guys, so we're going to look at um, energy transfers today, what they are, so what happens when we see energy going from one thing to another, and briefly we'll outline what an information system is. So, as usual, these are our dot points, okay, and these are our outcomes for today. So, what we want to do is we want to be able to, um, by the end of this, you should be able to do these things, define energy in different forms. Explain with examples what an energy transformation is. Describe. <laughs> you can hear my daughter in the background. Describe what an information system is. Um, explain the difference between analog and digital systems with everyday examples of both. And hopefully by the end you can use a QR code. Okay, so energy basically, it's the ability to do work. That's what we say, and what that means is, is the ability to cause something to change. If you want something to change, it takes energy. And these little icons here sort of represent our different types of energy. For example, um, you know, solar, fuel, which is a chemical energy, uh, probably more chemical energy here, um, chemical energy for food, thermal energy and nuclear, I think we just said nuclear, geothermal, and so forth. All right, so the symbol for energy is E, so it's as in, you know, E, uh, we're back on the crappy, so when we see this formula, the E equals energy, okay? Um, the unit is the joule, so that's the metric unit, the SI unit is joule, um, which doesn't have a capital, but it has a capital J for the symbol for the unit. So the law of conservation of energy, really important, you should know this, this shouldn't be anything overly new yet, is that energy can neither be created nor destroyed, it can only be transformed from one type to another. Alright, so types of energy. So it can basically be classified in two different types. We can have potential energy, which is stored energy that can be released, or kinetic energy, which is energy that can be, or it's energy of a moving object, okay? So energy and volume movement now, that includes heat, so when something's heating up, all the particles are moving upwards, and or they're moving more and more, that's kinetic energy. All right, so, quick example. Gravitational potential energy, when we lift something up higher, it gains potential energy, which means it's storing energy, so when it drops, when you let go, it falls. Um, Kinetic, an example of kinetic energy is mechanical energy, and when something's moving, it's using mechanical energy. So that's when the particles are moving. All right, so you're going to complete that table. So pause it right there and complete it, that table with five examples for each type, for kinetic and potential. All right. So energy transformations. Well, because it can't be created or destroyed, energy has to transfer from one form to another. So we start off, this is the basic source of most of our energy. Okay, so we, we start off with nuclear energy in the sun, and that moves along as light energy. It radiates from the sun to the earth. It heats up the, the earth, okay? Now, there's always an efficiency problem with energy. Like, sometimes we lose energy, sometimes we don't. And in this case, we lose energy through the atmosphere. It goes up as heat energy. Then we have, but some of that heat energy is stored as chemical potential energy. It's stored in the bonds of sugar during photosynthesis. And then we use that to make, so we convert that, to, that chemical energy to make heat and mechanical energy. So how we move around, keeps our bodies warm, etc. All right. Here are another couple quick examples. So we start off with chemical and so food and that's converted to energy to work in other words mechanical energy um, here we can have chemical energy it looks like something radioactive there but it's probably just coal um, and that's burnt to make electricity which is uh, actually there's a lot of cool stuff going on there anyway and then that's converted to light and sound and light etc and however we want to use it um, here is basically our, our source of energy for our house so we start off with coal um, unfortunately, and then we heat water. Now, what you do is you you heat water. You make some turbines turn, and that then generates electricity, which travels through the wire, which then gets to your house. And it's, obviously, there's a lot of steps in between there. And then you boil a jug, charge your phone, whatever. See, so that's energy and energy transformation. So it's it's drawn like a food chain. There are arrows in between. 
All right, information systems, pretty straightforward. So an information system is somewhere where information is stored and transferred via a medium, whether it's a wave or it's a, a CD or a book from one person to another. So it's a place where you can store information or store data and, and take it to another person. So they can either be analog or digital. Now an analog one, which if you cross out where is it, these two letters here, you've spilled, still spelled analog correctly. It will accept either one. So analog is a mechanism. So an analog one is a mechanism that represents data by a continuous physical variable. It could be voltage, a wave, pressure. So it's continuous. It's, a, a, it's that perfect wave shape. So it's continuous. Whereas digital is broken up into two discrete packets. Um, often, in this case, ones and zeros if it's if it's using a computer um, yeah so digital means it's split into discrete packets of on or off and there's no in between variables and that's the difference between a record like a vinyl record which has the grooves in it to play music and a CD which has um, on off on off on off ones and zeros alright so we use a bunch of these on a daily basis um, the, the D means it's digital and the A means it's analog. So body language is an analog, you know, it, it varies in between. QR codes, that's digital. Um, CB radio, because it uses radio waves, that's an analog thing. And mobile phones, they're interesting because they went from analog to digital. Compact disc, again, ones and zeros, that's a, a, a digital system and, and so forth. I want you to produce a table with 10 examples of both analog and digital um, information systems. All right. So here we see um, a a, tap, a tap a key for more uh, Morse code and semaphore. Now semaphore is a digital system because it's broken up into discrete. There's no in between. Um, CD also digital and the newspaper. Um, these are all information systems, and we, we use it, well, we don't use two of them, we don't use on a daily basis, and yeah, that's it, okay, so take your notes, make sure you're all set, and see you later.